Here when Jeff talked about what builds more muscle, doing bicep curls with both arms together or one arm at a time, he says this. Alternating dumbbell curls might be slightly less optimal. The study from Godo and colleagues makes me think that probably is a bit worse for muscle growth. The study he showed on screen wasn't even about bicep curls, not with both arms and not alternating. It didn't even measure the biceps at all. It measured leg growth. In my recent upload about why Julian's stomach looks the way it does, a lot of people commented saying they believed Jeff because he's been science-based for years. Would you be open to taking science-based lifting advice from me? But is he? Dude, Jeff Nippert is not scientific at all. This guy's a complete pseudoscientist. This dude is full of shit. Jeff may create an evidence-based content, and that can sway or convince a lot of people with claims like he's natural. What if I told you all of these people are actually natural? That's crazy. But this is a logical fallacy called appeal to authority. Why? Because anyone can say a study said, but not always what you see on the screen or what's spoken in a scientific jargon is actually true. Does it seem like he's selling himself and his brand? It does. What am I talking about? Here when Jeff talked about what builds more muscle, doing bicep curls with both arms together or one arm at a time, he says this. Alternating dumbbell curls might be slightly less optimal. The study from Godo and colleagues makes me think that doing those long pauses without any tension in between reps probably is a bit worse for muscle growth. Only if you actually look at the study, which probably no one did, including Jeff, you see something else. The study he showed on screen wasn't even about bicep curls, not with both arms and not alternating. It didn't even measure the biceps at all. It measured leg growth. The participants didn't rest two and a half seconds like you would between arms in alternating curls. They rested 30 seconds and it was specifically between rep number five and six. He basically took an unrelated paper, strapped it into an electric chair and tortured it until it said what he wanted. But. That's nonsense. And for you guys, train however you want. There's zero evidence of any difference in muscle building between the two versions. But this isn't the first time. In this video, Jeff demonstrates the squat. But how deep should you go for building the quad? According to Jeff, as deep as possible. Try to keep a relatively neutral spine, and you should get as deep as you comfortably can, because squatting deep does seem to cause more quad growth. And he shows this study. And that is wrong. If you actually read the study and squat deep to page number 7, there was no difference between half squats and full squats for the quads. Squatting deep does seem to cause more quad growth. It really shouldn't be that hard when the language in the paper matches your native language. Without mentioning it's only one study on 17 people, so we can't make such a hasty generalization. You should get as deep as you comfortably can. Does seem to cause more quad growth. We can barely extrapolate the results of this study to a small city in Malaysia. Does seem to cause more quad growth. Just like he also did right here. In the video when Jeff presents this study and says this. Science does suggest that having massive traps can be an indicator that you're on some special supplement because your upper traps have a higher androgen receptor density than most other muscles. <gasps> He's wrong. First of all, in the study, they didn't check any other muscles besides the traps and the vastus lateralis, which isn't even the entire quads like he wrote on the screen, just a quarter of them. And it's definitely not science suggests. Science does suggest. Because the science here is a single study on a sample of nine people who were taking anabolic steroids. The external validity is kissing zero, and that's not how you make a so-called science-based claim. Science does suggest. Now, there are also mistakes in the studies themselves. For example, here Jeff talks about the calves. This study found that the calves grew better from doing tiny partials beyond failure. Even 8th reps and 10th reps go until you literally can't budge the weight. And shows this study on screen. This study found that the calves grew better from doing tiny partials beyond failure. Only factually, it doesn't. If you reverse the clip, pause the study and look inside, you'll see that nothing Jeff said was actually in the study. How do I know? Because I read it and presented it on YouTube a week after it came out in 2022. Here's its protocol and it's not what Jeff said. Jeff was actually talking about a completely different study. But if you're not super familiar with the research world, you'd never know he was wrong. The study found that the calves grew better. But that's not all. There's also inaccuracies in the graphs. For example, when he talked about whether slow negatives build more muscle. Do slow negatives actually build more muscle? He showed this graph. After seven weeks, both groups grew the same amount of muscle. And a few seconds later, this graph from a different study. This study had people do squats with either a two second negative or a four second negative. Both groups grew the same amount of muscle. Only 
It's not accurate. He showed the after results of both groups from the study, not the change in how much they grew, and then he said they grew the same. Both groups grew the same amount of muscle. And that's not how it works. And let's explain it in a language Jeff will understand. If you have two Julians, Julian 1 and Julian 2, and they both hold syringes, I can't say there's no difference in how many syringes they got and only show the after. Because if before Julian 2 started with one syringe and after he had four, that means he gained three. Thank you very much. It means I have to show the difference between them in percentages, or in syringe count, or in Jeff's case, in millimeters of muscle thickness. I can't say there's no difference and show only the after. Both groups grew the same amount of muscle. And it's very hard to notice this unless you're extremely meticulous in the field and know every study he shows by heart. That's why he has a lot of inaccuracies that the average viewer wouldn't catch. Now, in general, I appreciate that he promotes science. Not always does he promote it accurately. Like the three sets of what the hell are you doing on the floor, my guy. Three new exercises in phase two of my pure bodybuilding program. But the fact that he uploads inaccurate graphs, studies that don't say what he claims, and a lack of deep understanding in analyzing the results, both groups grew the same amount of muscle, means that maybe this also happens in other topics he covers, like not digging deep enough into who's really natural. And someone is the most muscular without taking steroids. That's why I'm not surprised to see the internet getting mad and people calling him out. You're digging yourself in a hole deep I like Jeff, just like I think most of the world liked, liked Jeff. Even if someone has over 7 million subscribers, it doesn't mean that when they touch rust, it magically turns into gold. Or when they burp, uh. somehow the formula E equals MC squared appears in the air. Or that when they say something, it instantly becomes a fact. What if I told you all of these people are actually natural? That's crazy. Learn how to read research and I'll do my best to simplify it here. And more importantly, to point out the limitations of the science when it's necessary. Don't forget to subscribe, it helps a ton. Watch my other videos, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. If your entire brand and identity is about the science and intellectual honesty, you've nuked that into oblivion.